This is an ITT K601A KSU. This was ITT's equivalent to the Western Electric 551 KSU, which is located on the left side of the screen. This is a five line unit with an intercom and a miscellaneous card slot. This application I have three 400E line cards, which are at the top, a 415 tie line, a K403 for music on hold, and the intercom. They made an intercom um, that was hands-free if you had the K174 loudspeakers or the telephone sets with the call announcer built into it. I will be wiring this up shortly. I have removed the power supply due to the fact I'm going to back feed power from a 513 KSU so that I don't have to have continuous power to all of these systems uh, working on their own particular power supply. Down here at the bottom is the intercom and if it's functional it will be wired up to work. ITT's intercoms were not very good intercoms. I've installed probably 200 plus of these key systems. We have here a 551A KSU. The 551A was not intended to have a ringing generator equipped inside of it. The space is there and later they created the 551B KSU that could have a 118 frequency generator added to it. This power supply has a twist lock power connector which required a proprietary power cord which is difficult to find. Which is located on the lower right hand side of the KSU. I will be removing the fuses off of the power supply and back feeding power from a 513 KSU. This way I don't need to run power supplies continuous uh, in the idle mode for a display. I'm looking at a 551B KSU. This KSU has a power cord that is a standard US type 120 volt AC plug. Above the interrupter which is on the lower right hand corner, I will be adding a 118 frequency generator to this system. Again, it will not be actually wired in to the power. It'll be there just for display only because I'll be feeding power from another key system into this. This is one of many key systems I have in my telephone display room. This is a 551C KSU. This was the very last generation of the 551 series that Western Electric manufactured. This has a plastic cover and is much easier to wire due to the fact you have the block that's out in the open instead of recessed inside of the cabinet. I've mounted a 118 frequency generator to show what it looks like. It's down at the lower bottom of the part of the KSU. These ringing generators are fairly rare and expensive to buy. The brackets are far more rare. I've been fortunate to have enough brackets for the B and the C KSU. This KSU will have the power supply fuses, which is at the top, removed due to the fact that I will be backfeeding the power from another system to this. I will have about seven systems working off of one power supply. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Here is a 718 Comkey key system. This was Western Electric's packaged key system. It was intended to be cabled from the telephone directly to the 66 blocks located in the rear of this KSU. 
Doing this removed all flexibility of change in line assignments and so forth. This was intended to be what is called a square system. It has a 19 station intercom in it as well as a two link adapter. So you could have two intercom paths in use. However, during that time only one single intercom can be in use dialing. After the dialing is completed approximately two seconds then the intercom would release and the other link would then be able to access the dial portion of it. This also had, which I do have but not in there at this point, a paging card to connect to a PA system as well as a 451B, uh, I'm sorry that's not true, a 498 uh, KTU to provide music on hold. The power supply in this does not have a ringing generator as in they did all of the ringing over the intercom as tone signaling. So you could have a diode matrix and decide which line was going to buzz or excuse me tone signal over certain intercoms. This was a nice package system however it had virtually no flexibility. Here is the rear of the 718 COM key. I have yet to terminate the incoming phone lines or the phones that I intend on connecting to this system. I'll probably have three to four station sets connected to it for display purposes only. This is a Western Electric 513 KSU. This KSU can be eight lines and no intercom or it has a 10 station intercom if you want to sacrifice line one and two which is J1 and J2 that is on the upper left side of the intercom and then you could have six lines down below. Depending on how this was wired out and used of course line number one would be J1 and the last slot would be line number six if you use 10 button sets. In this case they made a nice package for intercom and phone lines. However the downside of this KSU was it was rotary dial only. It did not have the ability to have touch tone added to it. If you wanted touch tone intercom you would have to put in an outboard intercom. This system is going to power all of the 551 A, B, and C KSUs and the ITT 601 in my display room. Then it'll be on a off on switch so it's not on 24 7 using up electricity. Even though the idling current is almost nothing, I still didn't want to have it running just 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a couple hours of demonstration purposes. Here is a close up of the wiring for the ITT 601. I'm standing on a ladder doing this and it's kind of difficult. I have to wire the intercom up which requires me pulling my book out to <clears throat> figure out what leads you need to be wired Here is down. the inside of the 551A. inside of the 551B which is the same as the 551A from a wiring point of view. Here is the 551C so here is the final view for this video of the 601 KSU that is on the right hand side of the video. The cover of the 551A is partially blocking it the 551A is wired and plugged with 400 type KTUs. The 551B is wired and plugged with 400 type KTUs. And the C is wired and plugged with the 400H modern KTUs. Here's the 66 blocks that I have wired out from the key systems. The block on the most right hand side is the 601A. 
Then the next block to the left of that is the 551A. Next one's 551B, and the most left-hand block is the 551C. Cabling these out the way I did means I do not have to go back into the KSU and make additional wiring changes or anything if I'm just doing a straightforward system. The design of the ITT601 did not lead well to more than two phones actually wired into the KSU. <clears throat> I've seen installations where people had three or four phones wired into them and because they run out of lugs to tie cables to, they would just strip the wire and wrap it around the lugs or use scotch lock connectors. Either way, it was a disaster. Wiring them out on a 25 pair cable to its own dedicated block then makes for cross-connecting and wiring other phones much simpler.